Peter Jean thesis for my friend Peter Bullock. One day during my morning walk, I ran into Jim sporting the most staggering of haircuts. All the people around us with their boring lives, their tedious bangs and faux hawks, walking their shallow dogs, oblivious to the very concept of absolute beauty. Each became entangled in leashes as their animals went berserk in the presence of Jim's almighty hair. Upon contemplation, it was so obviously a work of majesty and power, like the heaviest and most radioactive of metal, where each note flays all the meaningless flesh from the face of this disgusting world. Jim practically shimmered. Butterflies abandoned their flowers just to circle his hair. So naturally, of course, I wanted to cut like that. I could crush the world if I had hair like that. Jim, I said in my most dispassionate voice, what genius did this to you? I had to stare at the ground to contain my enthrallment. I think Jim had become used to his heavy burden because he lifted my chin up with his strong right hand. Peter Jean Thyssen, he said. And with that name alone, he dashed every single one of my hopes. I should have known. Such an enduring voice in hair for so many years. It has been said that you cannot even make an appointment at Peter Jean Thyssen's, no matter who you knew or how much money you had. Instead, one had to sacrifice something they loved upon the iron hook dangling in front of his salon. And if your tribute was found worthy, if one was fortunate to be so blessed with a head that interested Thyssen, and one possessed a willingness to surrender all, then you would receive a summons and everything you knew would change. Many were the things I had left upon that hook, only to slink off in shame to some infinitely lesser stylist in El Cerrito. But witnessing Jim, I knew I had been holding something back and that I was the one ultimately responsible for all of my failures. If I truly wanted what I wanted, then I knew what I had to do. The next day, I walked up to Peter John Thyssen's and, shedding my clothes, I hoisted myself upon that hook, piercing my chest, holding on until I passed out from the pain. Glad was my heart when I woke up in the solitary chair of Peter Jean Thyssen's salute, salon, wounded and dressed, but alive. Would you like some herbal tea while you wait? Asked an assistant dressed entirely in silver, her hair some sort of beautiful machine the future will never understand. The cut itself of how time fled and what happened during that velvet, I cannot begin to describe. The salon itself had no mirrors, Mirrors are abominable, this once said in an early interview when he still gave those. All they do is copy that which must remain unique. Still, I could feel my new self, suffused in the radiance of a beauty that cannot last, which is all the more wondrous because of it. For once in my life, I felt weightless and free. I wrote a check for everything I owned. It was the least I could offer. But I knew Peter Jean Thyssen would not touch it. Whatever words I could say could not measure up to what I had been gifted. The moment I walked out that door, I could crush, or for that matter, bless, whatever faced me. Anything or person I could possibly want would be mine, because I was that beautiful. Oh, if you could only have seen my heart at that moment. But at the threshold, I lingered. I turned around and walked back inside to watch Thyssen working on his next miracle, a child no more than 11 years old. She looked so happy, I could only wonder how much she must have lost in order to be here. What is the point of bearing such beauty? Beauty that can make cars crash, trees fall, men and women do whatever delights you. The lightest and most heaviest of burdens now crowned my head. And yet at that moment, I felt so selfish, so worthless. I don't want to leave, I said. I'll sweep the floor or make the tea or anything you like. 
And I kept saying all the different things I could think of that I could do, be of use, if only I could stick around. Let me stay and learn from you, I said. I was crying. No doubt my tears were already destroying whatever Thyssen had made of me. Why would you wish to do that? His assistant asked. I waved my arm, though any gesture felt useless. The moment I walk out that door, this, all of this, will begin to go away. So, replied Thyssen, too much an artist to even raise an eyebrow. What is the point of anything being beautiful if time destroys everything and everyone eventually? It is the same for love or anything else we think good. Why should anyone bother going to get their hair done, even if it is by the greatest artist of our time? Unless it is to inspire others to make more beauty, I said. Though every word I felt, every word felt futile the moment it crossed my unworthy lips. Let me learn whatever you wish to teach me. The child in her chair laughed, most likely at the foolishness of my behavior. But I stood there, and I let myself be judged by people who know, knew more about truth than I will ever know, which is why I felt like sunlight or a length of golden hair before it is perfectly cut when the assistant smiled at me and Peter Jean Thyssen said, Okay, tomorrow I will teach you how to sharpen a pair of scissors. <laughs>